This is An Infinite Path, spoken word essays by Niles Heckman, some of which go on to become our documentary short subject films, half of which release freely here through the podcast, all of which can be found through your support at nilesheckman.com. In efforts to save or spend outside of life's various standard needs, the bills, food, cleaning products, Kleenex, and other basic necessities, how does one choose to spend their money, a product of their time? Outside of raising children or perhaps philanthropic efforts to help those beyond one's own immediate family, we would say one of the best uses of it would be on the tools of our trades, meaning the tools you use to make something, to create and not just consume. During the Renaissance, it was the acquisition of chisels for sculpture or brushes for painting. Back then, the acquiring of the paint pigments in themselves was a massive task, as they had to be made by hand, not bought from the art supply store, as those had yet to exist, but instead made from scratch by combining oils with various minerals, and paintbrushes made from the hair of animals, sometimes being from difficult-to-reach locations. If those things could not have been created or later manufactured for purchase, we would not have been left with such timeless masterpieces, which were made from such tools in hand. The printing press and the typewriter were inventions which greatly increased productivity at the time, democratizing both reading and then writing, very much worth their acquisition. Much like the modern-day computer, they may have been tools which had expensive prices to enter into, but had incredible longevity in terms of their usage. There's a quote in the startup world that, You can mine for gold, or you can sell pickaxes. This is a reference to the California gold rush from the late 1800s, where some of the most successful business people, such as Samuel O'Brannan or Levi Strauss, didn't mine for gold themselves, but instead sold tools to miners. Wheelbarrows, tents, pickaxes, etc. Mining for gold was the glamorous path, but actually turned out, in aggregate, to be a worse return on capital and labor than selling the actual supplies, because there were so many people after them at the time. Most supply sellers have certainly come to know this, so go after the ones which make a quality product, not just a mass-produced one that's the cheap flavor of the time. A classic example would be the Barn Woodsmith Workshop, or much more common, Garage Workbench usually a staple of male masculinity, for sawdust can be referred to as man glitter. There's another saying which goes something like, a town is still local and quaint if it still has a local hardware store on its main drag. Selling good old handmade building tools instead of mass-produced ones now at the huge chain store. For when you purchase a hammer, which has about 147 uses, if you don't live out of a hotel sleeping in a new place every night, but instead mostly in one place, it's a tool that's not going to become unnecessary. The classic old tool workbench is a thing of longevity, and if you buy good tools and take care of them, they can build you a lifetime worth of quality craftsmanship or artistry. Or maybe even longer. Sometimes one may even use inherited tools from another era which can still be very good, or vastly superior or even unreplaceable. We know someone who has used on a near-weekly basis in their culinary pursuits these phenomenally well-made cast-iron skillets which they inherited from their grandmother. Church organs are also a relic from the old world, and a hyper-specialized one at that, which contains so much analog complexity that those who knew how to build them have mostly long passed. The maintenance of these hundred, if not multiple hundred-year-old instruments, which were built to last, is also difficult. For if one forgets how something was made, they will likely also forget how it is repaired. Our personal philosophy over the years with tools of our trades have been similar, to buy the good stuff, much less often. Since in this cycle of humanity, external hardware technologies are firing on all cylinders, we admit that our main consumerist research and purchasing guilt is camera equipment quite regularly paying attention to when new things are released and being somewhat constantly interested in the latest details and specs, which actually have very little difference in the creation of the craft than, let's say, the previous half-dozen versions. Yet in this regard, being quite conservative to only acquire something new if it helps the quality of our outputs, streamlining our artist process, or allows some sort of dynamic that didn't exist, which could not have happened prior to other iterations. 
Recent examples of this are a specific type of computer mouse that is more ergonomic, preventing wrist strain, and a mechanical keyboard. A modern keyboard technology very popular in the East, which is somewhat catching on in the West, and are very much a throwback to the old school style 70s and early 80s keyboards with louder clickety-clack keys. Yet these new versions are heavily customizable, but most importantly wonderful for coders or writers with tactile feedback on the fingers. A filmmaking acquaintance of ours is from Ukraine. He is an amazing cottage industry crafter who makes some of the best custom camera straps on the internet. He has a small store on a site which hosts small business sellers, which is his primary income. After having been able to leave his home country in a little European car, full to the brim with mostly the necessities for his child and family, the only thing that he has now for himself short of his clothes are his tools for his craftsmanship, wherein he can set up a mobile workshop anywhere, be that at a hostel, hotel room, or micro apartment. In his current standings, he must do what he can to continue having an income stream for his specialized trade, and his tools are crucial for that. Over the years, we have learned to advise almost anyone for whatever their craft and tools needed associated with that craft, table saw, chef's knife, drafting table, typewriter, drum set, pottery kiln, microphone, weed whacker, camera, pencil, oven, ballet slipper, compass or square, harp, synthesizer, automobile, laptop, tractor, DJ deck, whatever your craft, dipping your toes into the trade vicariously through someone else already in that craft is a good entry vector, much how apprenticeships have long worked through time. Then based on recommendations from those already in the trade, acquire the best tools which you can afford, which ideally means you'd only have to buy them once, rather than buying suboptimal and then later working up towards another tier of slightly better, followed by another tier of even better, etc., the good stuff is almost always the most well-designed, which means not only does it need less replacement, but also that it increases efficiency, saving time and thus money. For if the tool itself is a work of art, that only further motivates and inspires the creator to make further works of art with that tool. To become more a master of whatever trade, part of that involves using less things but better things. For mindfulness and minimalism should entail only the essential acquisition of tools that you can use to make work, fulfill passions, and get those things accomplished. Purchasing less often to consume less and create more. An inherent preventative against gear acquisition syndrome. The excessive and over-acquiring of gear, which frankly, in itself is a waste of time, with much more time spent researching a tool than actually using the tool. The modern-day tech review video is doing this. Simply being only a more modern version of talking about Michelangelo's brushes he used to create the art on the Sistine Chapel, instead of talking about the development, skills, or craft of the artist that used those paintbrushes. Michelangelo himself has stood the test of time because he did not endlessly research or talk about his tools, but instead used those quality tools to a masterful extent, showing the world what was possible to be created with them.